people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. In today's program, I will put the spotlight on an act that was enacted in the year of 1871 on February 21st. The Congress passes an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, also known as the Act of 1871. What I am about to share with you today is a premise for all the things that are happening here today in the year 2012. When you fully understand the ramifications of the past, you will then fully understand the ramifications of the present and you will know how to change the future. And here is where our story begins. With no constitutional authority to do so, Congress creates a separate form of government for the District of Columbia a 10-mile square parcel of land. The act was passed when the country was weakened and financially depleted in the aftermath of the Civil War. It was at that time a strategic move by foreign interests, international bankers, who were intent upon gaining a stranglehold on the coffers and neck of America. Congress cut a deal with the international bankers, specifically the Rothschilds of London, to incur a debt to said bankers. Because the bankers were not about to lend money to a floundering nation without serious stipulations, they devised a way to get their foot in the door of the United States. The Act of 1871 formed a corporation called the United States, all in capital letters. The corporation, owned by foreign interests, moved in and shoved the original Constitution into a dustbin. With the Act of 1871, the organic Constitution was defaced and in effect vandalized and sabotaged. When the title was capitalized and the word for was changed to of in the title. The Constitution of the United States of America is the Constitution of the Incorporated United States of America in all capital letters. It operates in an economic capacity and has been used to fool the people into thinking it governs the Republic. It does not. Capitalization is not insignificant when one is referring to a legal document. This seemingly minor alteration has had a major impact on every subsequent generation of Americans. What Congress did by passing the Act of 1871 was create an entirely new document, a constitution for the government of the District of Columbia, an incorporated government. This newly altered constitution was not intended to benefit the Republic. It benefits only the corporation of the United States of America and operates entirely outside the original organic constitution. Instead of having absolute and unalienable rights guaranteed under the organic constitution, we the people now have relative rights or privileges. One example is the sovereign's right to travel, which has now been transformed on the corporate government policy into a privilege that requires citizens to be licensed. An example would be passports. By passing the Act of 1871, Congress committed treason against the people who were sovereign under the grants and decrees of the Declaration of Independence and the Organic Constitution. The Act of 1871 became the foundation of all the treason since committed by government officials. The United States isn't a country. It's a corporation. In preparation for stealing America, the puppets of Britain's banking cabal had already created a second government, a shadow government designed to manage what the common herd believed was a democracy, but what was really was an incorporated United States. And conspiring together, this two-headed monster disallowed the common herd all of their sovereign rights under the original Constitution. To fully understand how our rights of sovereignty were ended, you must know the full meaning of the word sovereign, which means chief or highest supreme power, superior in position to all others, independent of and unlimited by others, possessing or entitled to original and independent authority or jurisdiction. This description I have cited can be found in Webster's Dictionary. In short, our government, which was created by and for us as sovereigns, free citizens deemed to have the highest authority in the land, was stolen from us along with our rights. It is important to keep in mind here that according to the original Constitution, only we the people are sovereign. The government is not sovereign. 
Our original Declaration of Independent States, government is subject to the consent of the governed, and that's us. It doesn't take a constitutional historian to figure out that the United States government has not been subject to the consent of the governed since long before you and I were born. Rather, the governed are subject to the whim and greed of the corporation, which has stretched its tentacles beyond the 10-mile square parcel of land known as the District of Columbia. In fact, it has invaded every state of the Republic. Mind you, the corporation has no jurisdiction beyond the District of Columbia. You just think it does. You see, my friends, you are presumed to know the law, which is very weird since we the people are taught nothing about the law in school. We memorize obscure facts and phrases here and there, and our teachers only gloss over the Bill of Rights. And our schools, which are controlled by the corporate government, don't delve into the constitution of death. After all, the corporation was established to indoctrinate and dumb down the masses, not to teach anything of value or importance. And certainly, no one ever mentioned that America was sold out to foreign interests, and that we were beneficiaries of the debt incurred by Congress, or that we were in debt to the international bankers. Yet, for generations, Americans have had the bulk of their earnings confiscated to pay a massive debt that they did not incur. There has been an endless stream of things the people were not told, and now that you are being told, how do you feel about being made the recipient of a debt without your knowledge or consent? If the passage of the Act of 1871, Congress set a series of subtle and overt deceptions into motion, deceptions in the form of decisions that were meant to sell us down the river. And over time, the Republic took it on the chin until it was knocked down and counted out by a TKO. With the surrender of the people's gold in 1933, the common herd was handed over to illegitimate law. And I'll bet you weren't taught that in school. And now the final snapshot. Our corporate form of governance is based on Roman civil law and admiralty, or admiralty or maritime law, which is also known as the divine right of kings and the law of the seas, another fact of American history not taught in our schools. And here's another wake-up call for you. Roman civil law was fully established in the 13 colonies before our nation began and then became managed by private international law. In other words, the government, the government created for the District of Columbia via the Act of 1871 operates solely on the private international law, not common law, which was the foundation of our constitutional republic. And it is this fact that has impacted all Americans in concrete ways. For instance, although private international law is technically only applicable within the District of Columbia and not in the other states of the Union, the arms of the Corporation of the United States are called departments. As an example, the Justice Department, the Treasury Department, and those departments affect everyone, no matter where and what state that you live. Guess what? Each department belongs to the corporation, to the all capital letter United States. I now pose a question. How do you feel that you know that you are now being ruled by a corporation? A corporation that operates under Roman civil law outside the original constitution. I challenge everyone listening to contact their congressman and see what they have to say about this. Congress is fully aware of this deception. What this great deception really means is that the members of Congress do not work for us, for you and me. They work for the corporation, for the all capital letter United States. Is it any wonder why we can't get Congress to do anything on our behalf or meet our demands or answer our questions? And here's the bottom line. Technically, legally, or any other way you want to look at this matter, the corporate government of the all capital of the United States has no jurisdiction or authority in any state of the Union, the Republic, beyond the District of Columbia. Let that tidbit sink in. Then ask yourself, could this deception have occurred without full knowledge and complicity of the Congress? Do you think it happened by accident? And if you do, you're deceiving yourself. There are no accidents and there are no coincidences. Face the facts and confront the truth. Remember, you are presumed to know the law. They know you don't know the law 
and, for that matter, your history. Why? Because no concerted effort was ever made to teach you or otherwise or inform you. As a sovereign, you are entitled to full disclosure of all facts. As a slave, you are entitled to nothing other than what the corporation decides to give you. Remember also that ignorance of the law is no excuse. It's your responsibility and obligation to learn the law and know how it applies to you. No wonder the arrogant corporation counted on the fact that most people are too indifferent, unconcerned, distracted, or lazy to learn what they need to know to survive within this system. We have been conditioned to let the government do our thinking for us. Now's the time to turn that around if we intend to help save our republic and ourselves before it's too late. As an instrument of the international bankers, the all capital letter United States owns you from birth to death. It also holds ownership of all of your assets, all of your property, and even your children. Think long and hard about all the bills, taxes, fines, and licenses you have paid or have purchased. Yes, they had you by the pockets. If you don't believe it, read the 14th Amendment. See how free you really are. Ignorance of the facts led to your silence. Silence is construed as consent. Consent to be beneficiaries of a debt you did not incur. As a society, people, we have been deceived hundreds of years. We think we are free, but in truth, we are servants of the corporation. Congress committed treason against the people in 1871. Honest men could have corrected this fraud and treason. But apparently, there weren't enough honest men to counteract the lust for money and power. We have lost more freedom than we will ever know thanks to corporate infiltration of our so-called government. Do you think that any soldier who died in any of our wars would have fought if he or she had known the truth? Do you think that one person would have laid down his or her life for a corporation? How long will we remain silent? How long will we perpetrate the myth that we are free? When will we stand together as one sovereign people? When will we take back what was stolen from us? And in closing, I would like to ask the final question. If the people of America had known to what extent their trust was betrayed, how long would it have taken for a real revolution to occur? What we need now is a revolution in thought. We need to change our thinking. Then we can change our world. All children deserve their rightful legacy, the liberty our ancestors fought to preserve, the legacy of a sovereign and fully free people. If we do not learn from the past, we'll be doomed to repeat it. I'd like to thank everyone for watching the Act of 1871.